Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest and this afternoon we've just got two things to do but it's a two-in-one job. So um, earlier in the day I had a couple call me who was going to look at a, a pre-used car and so they asked if I did a pre-purchase inspection which I do. Uh, a lot of shops will do one for free but since I'm mobile I charge $20 just to cover gas and a little bit of time to get up there and do that and uh, in hopes you know of gaining a new customer but that's why a lot of shops will do it for free is because the person will buy the vehicle and they'll say it has this this and this problem and then they'll make their money uh, when the person buys the vehicle and they fix it for them so um, it's not always a guarantee but it's a pretty good practice and uh, it helps get some customers so we're gonna head up there uh, one car that they were gonna have me look at which is closer to where I'm at um, already sold so they're in a, the town about five minutes north of us looking at two different cars. So I'll just do a multi-point inspection. I used to have a list, I think it was like 40 point inspection on a pre-owned pre car, uh, pre-purchase inspection. But I pretty much just go through and look at everything. I've got a code reader just to make sure that it's ready to pass emissions. Uh, just a little inspection mirror to look around if I need to see anything. Um, and then here's one of my favorite tools, which is just a little impressive sometimes to some people. A lot of times you can look at brake pads and tell how worn they are. But this is a little gauge that you can stick up against the rotor and then you can feel with this little hook here and you can hook the edge of that uh, brake pad and tell how thick it is. So cool little uh, tool here and it does have you know a little visual indicator telling you at three millimeters here, uh, it's at its change interval. At seven or eight millimeters here, uh, it's yellow and then you know you have green anything higher than that. So. Uh, yellow is like think about changing your brakes in the future red is your change interval so this is a cool little tool to just be able to stick there i don't know what kind of vehicle it is just stick through uh the wheel and feel how thick that brake pad is so you can give people an idea of how soon they're going to need a brake change as well so we'll go up there look at it and kind of walk through what we do for a pre-purchase inspection and uh we'll have a lot of other awesome videos coming out later this week i have had a few questions um one of the most common being how often am I going to put out videos? I usually put out videos three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And if I do put out videos on Monday, Wednesday, Friday instead of Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So if it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Saturday, sometimes I'll put out a video more often than not. So if it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday week, then you'll probably get a video on Saturday. But if not, you know, maybe my wife's had the baby and we're in the hospital for a week or so. We're well, not in the hospital for a week, but I might not put out a video for a few days. Um, or it might just be one of those weeks. So we'll head up here real quick and we'll get this these vehicles inspected for them. Yeah, that oil looks just a little dirty, but really good. Uh, again, just a little dirty, not dirty very much at all, but not super clean. That's the distinguishing factor right there that I'm trying to make because it's not perfectly clean, but it looks good. And then we'll check our transmission here just for the state of the fluid and not necessarily the level. But if you can see there, nice and red. I see a few shiny particles in there, but not too many. And it is nice and red and doesn't look burnt. So that is also a good sign. We'll look around now for any signs of the vehicle having had work done by somebody unprofessional, such as broken connectors and stuff like that. This appears to be new. I've replaced several of these. It might be new. Looks like we're missing a vacuum line there, but I'm not familiar enough with this vehicle to say for certain if it's missing or not. It does look like it's missing a grommet on this, so it's been removed, but obviously a little bit of work's gotta be done to every vehicle. So all in all looks good, nothing really concerning. So we'll move on to the suspension now. We're gonna give everything a visual inspection on the suspension, and we're also gonna test it manually by pushing on it and making sure it doesn't balance more than once or twice. I think three is the maximum they say, but I like to put my weight on it and just see it come right back up and pretty much stay still and not bounce. So we'll watch that. All right, so here we are in the first vehicle. First thing I'm gonna start out with is just scanning the codes. The customer took it on a test drive. So I'm just gonna ask him how it performed, if it had any hard shifts or, 
or if um, it was pulling to one side or the other had any shaking if he's not familiar with any of those or, or wasn't paying attention then I'll take it on a test drive and double check but um, we'll start off with this code reader which we've just got plugged in he did say the only thing he noticed was the wrench light was on which is just a service interval light and so um, it probably is just telling them to change, you know, look, there it is, the oil right there, oil by 15%. So just a reminder to change the oil. Uh, it's nothing like a check engine light. That means there's a diagnostic problem with the engine. So here looking at it, it looks like everything is good to go except for EVAP there. So that's something I'm going to have to tell them. It may have just not had enough drive cycles, but it's not completely ready for emissions here. So... It sounds like it's running good. Yeah, no knocking, no valve chatter, which is good. And uh, that's the only concern right there is that EVAP light is on. So we'll pop the hood and we'll head under there and look at the stuff under the hood and the suspension and see what's going on under there. So, oh, he did say the windshield wipers aren't working. So I'm gonna listen and see if that's the motor or if it's a busted line and, and by windshield wipers I mean the sprayers. So. Let's see here. Where are we at? Okay. Well that looks like it's working to me. So I'm maybe pulling on the wrong one. I didn't see it. It was just tucked behind here. There it is. But he may have been pulling on or pushing on that one. Or he may have a vehicle that he's used to pushing on it. So he may have been pushing rather than pulling. So I'll just show him that. But it works. That was his only other concern. And here we go, we'll hop under the hood. All right, so this is good. I'm fairly familiar with these Honda engines. The power steering looks like it's leaking just a little, which is kind of common on these. So we'll look at that fluid here. The fluid actually looks either new or it's in really good condition. So Uh, we'll we'll look around for any signs of a power steer leak under there if it was leaking really bad and there be there's a lot of junk under there then we'll assume this was probably topped off and that's why it looks new if not then that's just a really good sign that that pumps in great condition so giving everything a look over it all looks good we'll look at all the fluids brake fluid a little dirty but I've definitely seen worse. It's nice and topped off. Coolant as well looks good and we'll check the oil. Okay, I don't know if you could tell, but that did have a good little bit of bounce in it. It was about three times. So that's probably about the limit which is something that we should tell them uh, to know about. So it might not have to be replaced right now, but if it gets a little bit worse, then it will. So we can see here the life of the pads pretty much, but uh, we'll go ahead and stick our gauge in there and get a exact, and get an exact measurement on these brake pads. All right, and you can see there we're at four millimeters, so they're just fine for now. Got about a year left, I'd say, depending on how you drive it, uh, until they need to be replaced. And the, the rotors look fine. They don't look worn with any unusual patterns. So that's good. We'll check out the backs as well. And as well, so we'll go ahead and look at bushings here and tie rods as well the bushings here look fine the upper tie rod there looks fine i'll see if i can move it if it's movable by hand easily then it's worn out and that's not and that sway bar in link over there also looks fine the vehicle has about 150 or 160,000 miles but it looks like it's been maintained pretty well look at the axle shaft here all-wheel drive and that looks fine as well looking at the axle shaft and its boots and there's not any play in that axle well, very minimal 
Okay, now we'll look at the front suspension components. Pretty much do the same thing. We'll just tuck our head under the side here. That axle shaft feels fine. That lower ball joint looks good. No cracks around that rubber boot. Tie rod feels fine. I can't wiggle that at all, honestly. So that's good. Everything here looks fine. The sway bar link looks good as well. And no cracks in the brake lines. And very minimal oil underneath the engine here. There is a little bit on the front. The transmission has very minimal here. And we'll get a look at the transmission on the, the engine on the front there. Okay, hard to tell where that's coming from. Looks like it may be the oil pan, but some of you guys may know exactly what that is, so let me know in the comments down below. For example, on an Altima I did recently, everybody uh, was warning me about the oil cooler on the back of the engine. So if it's something like that on this one, let us know in the comments down below, but it looks like it may just be that oil pan. On Everything on the front here looks fine, and we'll shine our light down there and double check. That serpentine belt looks really good as well. It looks like this vehicle has been kept in, in really good shape. It doesn't look like this belt is brand new as if this uh, used car dealership had changed it themselves. It just looked like it's been maintained well. It has probably a couple months of life in it that's been uh, used so far. So, Okay, this looks like it's in really good shape. Motor mounts are all good. Everything that I can see is good. I don't see any signs of worry. So. We'll hop over to the other vehicle now and give it an inspection. This one looks good, everything except for that one system that wasn't ready for emissions, so that's something to warn them about. But if there's something that you would have checked for a pre-purchase inspection, let us know in the comments down below. We'll go ahead and hop over to the other vehicle and do the exact same thing. So I'll just leave this GoPro on my shirt and just kind of talk through as I go, but I won't uh, maybe have it in my hand pointing out everything quite as specifically. So we'll hop over there and it's a Nissan Pathfinder. The other one, there it is. Uh, mine's Thanks. just waiting on that one system. Okay. So, thank you so okay. much. Okay, you're Good welcome. Thanks. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Good to meet you. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> All right. So, like I mentioned, that may not be the be-all, end-all video for how to do a pre-trip, a pre-purchase inspection. I know people like Chris Fix have done one that are very detailed. That's kind of what I go through when I get out here with a customer at a pre-purchase inspection. I don't do a ton of them, um, but we gave everything a good look over. So there was just that one EVAP system that wasn't ready. He's gonna talk to them about that. They took it on a test drive and felt perfectly comfortable. They said it drove perfect, no weird noises, no hard shifts. And uh, so uh, everything looks good. I think they're gonna go ahead and get that vehicle. We actually didn't even look at the Pathfinder because I think uh, they were just waiting on the word to hear if that was a good vehicle or not. It looks like it's been maintained well, and apparently the used dealership here has a report saying that they've gotten the timing belt done recently as well. So uh, it looks like it was owned by somebody who really respected the vehicle, and uh, I told him it, it wouldn't be a vehicle that I would hesitate buying if I was interested in it. So uh, again, there's no guarantees. Looking at a, a car before you buy it doesn't guarantee that it's not going to break down the moment you drive it off the lot but everything I saw was a good indication that the vehicle is gonna be driving in pretty good shape for a while. And, and of course, every vehicle has a associated maintenance cost, so things are gonna break over time. Um, but if you buy a German car, it's gonna have a higher associated maintenance cost than uh, some Japanese cars that just tend to drive forever. So this is the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you like the video or to enter our giveaway, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.